People around the world are turning their attention to Hiroshima as the 70th anniversary of the world's first atomic bombing approaches. One of them is Swedish writer Monica Bra. She's helped survivors over the years share their stories with people outside Japan. The anniversary made her realize it was time to reconnect with Hiroshima and remind the world of the horrors of nuclear weapons. And as keywords, Emiko Lunat reports on the writer's return visit. Monica Brow is back in Hiroshima for the first time in 10 years. It's a chance for her to catch up with a longtime friend and check on how she and others have been doing. Hiroshima and the world changed on August 6, 1945. Brow has been writing about atomic bomb survivors, or hibakusha, for 40 years. She seldom had the chance to visit Hiroshima. But she knows there's no substitute for hearing from survivors firsthand. She has come back to Japan to find out more about the ongoing aftermath of 1945. I want to have plenty of time to look around mm -hmm. and to, to get the feeling. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not quite easy to get the feeling mm -hmm. because Hiroshima has grown. Mm -hmm. uh, it has changed very much. Brow has asked an old friend for help. Keiko Ogura is one of the few survivors with good English skills. They first met in the early 1980s when the Cold War between the U.S. and the Soviet Union was intense. The world faced the threat of nuclear war as the superpowers had developed more atomic weapons. We continue to do our work mm -hmm. and with other uh, the people from all over the world, like mm -hmm. you, you see. Mm -hmm. And then we want to, we have a dream someday. And so many years later, I met you, <laughs> and yes. still you were working, <laughs> and I was so happy. <laughs> well, yes. you were working too, and it wouldn't be possible to do the work I do if you didn't, if we didn't work together, and you helped me as much as you have. Like Brow wanted to speak with children of survivors to hear how the bombing affected their lives. Kazuhiko Futagawa was born in 1946, a year after the bombing. He says he and many of his friends had trouble finding jobs and spouses. Did you experience any discrimination when you when you told that you were Tainai? Discrimination. Mm. Sabet, sabet. 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 Oh, I, I think I have something. I felt it's some sabet uh, mm. and prejudice. Mm. A lack of information about the effects of radiation led to discrimination. How much has been hidden? How much uh, people have not wanted to talk about what they experienced? Often because they were afraid of uh, uh, discrimination. Bra wanted to see how young people from other countries would react to the stories of survivors. She went to a seminar where Ogura described her experiences on the fateful day. High school and university students from six countries listened closely. America, France, Brazil, to Brazil. Hi, America. Hi. If I get married, this girl. Ogura was eight years old when the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. She was near her home, about two and a half kilometers from ground zero. Buildings were just pressed down and uh, as if a giant step on the city, you see, just step down. Brow watched as the students heard. For the first time, a person who was in Hiroshima described a moment long before they were born. 
in the bunker with the me having met someone who lived through it and hearing more details and just life stories. Like she suggested, educating people on what happened and making sure they remember so it doesn't happen again. During her week-long stay in Hiroshima, Brow realized that the legacy of the atomic bombing is far from over. As the number of survivors dwindles, she feels a greater need to make sure their voices are heard. Trying to do something for the future, like when she talks to the students and tries to encourage them to think about what they can do. We survivors are encouraged by them too, you know. Yeah, Both that's encourage you <laughs> together. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing to <laughs> say. I think that the testimony of the Hibakusha, um, that's, that's very important to listen to because I think that nowadays when we think of nuclear weapons, we tend to think of them as, as um, strategically important or unimportant. But to really understand what they mean, we have to listen to what it means when, it, when, they, are lo when they are thrown on people what happens on the ground. And Emiko Lennart joins us now. So Emiko, what made Dr. Bra visit Hiroshima this year? Aki, it has to do with how as a writer she has covered atomic bomb survivors throughout her career. She says that during her visit she rediscovered the suffering caused by the bomb has not gone away even after, after 70 years. Mm. People in Hiroshima face the challenge of how to pass survivors' messages on to the future generations. The number of survivors gets smaller every year, and the time is of the essence. So Dr. Brown understands that. She's trying to serve as a bridge between the survivors and the young people in the world. Mm. Well, the writer is from Sweden, and Swedish leaders have been known for its position um, as being um, promoting uh, nuclear disarmament. Um, do you think that behind the friendship of the two ladies that we just saw, uh, Mrs. Bra and Mrs. Ogura, there's um, a relationship or connection between the two cities? Uh, well, one is the city Hiroshima and the country Sweden in terms of its policies. Mm -hmm. um, for nuclear weapons? I do think so. I believe so. Um, there was a movement uh, earlier in uh, the 1950s by the Swedish people against the nuclear, wep uh, nuclear weapons. But during the Cold War, the threat of the Soviet Union caused Sweden put, to put priority on boosting mm. its defense capabilities. So it is said the country actually uh, started a nuclear weapons program, a uh, nuclear weapons development program in the late 1940s. But later, Sweden shut down the program hmm. and joined the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in 1972. And since then, as you know, the Sweden has been in forefront of efforts to promote uh, nuclear disarmament. Well, Emiko, I think it means a lot that someone from another country is telling the story of Hiroshima. I mean, she's delivering first-hand personal experiences. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Dr. Brad's contribution will help young people in the world uh, to form opinions about nuclear issues and give them information they need to make choices that will lead to a better world. She says she will write a book about what she saw and heard during her trip. She hopes that she will, um, she will help people better understand what happened in Hiroshima. Thank you, Emiko. Thank you.